Okay, so we have this parasha called Bamidbar. And Bamidbar opens up with a few details that are interesting. And not only is Bamidbar a parasha, it's also a seder, right? With Chamishi Chum Torah, and each one of the Chamishi Chum Torah has a different element to it, right? So we know Bereshis is the seaport of the Avos, and it's Baker around Eretz Yisrael. Seaport Mitzias Mitzrah, and the Shmos is about Golos and Geula until Hashvah Sashchina. Vayikra is about Tara and Kedusha, right? Avod of the Mesa Mikdash, keeping it Tahar, right? And Bamid, and Dvarim is about Moshe Rabbeinu's Chazara of the Torah, right? All the Midos, the Musar of the Torah. Bamidbar is basically a bunch of stories. There's almost no halacha in Bamidbar. No halachas in Bamidbar. And it's all around the different trials and tribulations they had in the Midbar. There are 40 years, right? Different stories that issues had. So if you want to think about what Bamidbar is, Bamidbar is like the same as there's something called the Avos, which are a simon of how um, we're supposed to live. Bamidbar is the simon of what happens to children throughout their struggles. Okay? Now, we see the beginning of Bamidbar starts two very interesting elements. Bamidbar Sinai. He specifically spoke to him in Bamidbar Sinai. Be'ohel Moed, the Ohel Moed in Sinai. Be'echad ha'chodesh ha'sheni, b'shana ha'sheni, tzei sami eretz Nitzrayim le'emar. In chodesh iyar. Rosh chodesh iyar. Okay? Torah specifically madgish that this happens in chodesh iyar. And it happens in the Midbar. What happens? Basically, the first huge part of the Bar Midbar, the Asik is making an army. Right? Counting people to make an army. How many do we have? Which is kind of strange because why are they doing this now? We know that there was a count after the Chet Ego. When was Chet Ego? Chet Ego was on Yudzayin Betamuz. Okay? Then there was a 40 day period of Kas. There was a 40 day period of Ritzui, which is Elul. Yom Kippur, the Luchoshniyos. After Luchoshniyos, Hashem told them to count again. And they gave all the silver to the Beis Mikdash, and that's how we know the count of the Jews because of the minion of the amount of silver coins they gave in. And now we're talking about, then what happened was they built the Beis Mikdash all throughout the winter. Comes Nisan, they put it up. The, 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 the Mishkan is working for 30 days. Now it's Rosh Chodesh Iyer. Now count them again. Why? What's the point? But we see what happens is that first they get an army together based on each Shevet. And after they have each Shevet organized, they now we have a place to put them. They're put in a specific place around the Machana Shechina. Right? So the whole process is basically installing Tzivot Hashem. It's installing the army of Hashem. Why do we need an army then? So there's something very deep which is expressed in the Zohar in Parshas Truman Tetzave. And it's really a, a lesson in a lot of things. The Zohar says in Parshas Truman Tetzave that the, the Midbar was a place where the Sitra Achra the bad side of the world had an incredible power. Right? Which is a very important lesson of everything physical. That the physical world and the spiritual world are always a mirror of each other. Right? So if you have a place which is dangerous, there is no life. And not only that, there's scorpions and snakes and, and difficult things. That's a simon that the spiritual place, the spiritual energy of that place is also messed up. Because if the spiritual energy of a place is good, you're going to see paradise. Which will teach you a lot about people and places that don't have cleanliness and don't have functionality of beauty and gashmias as a, as a, 
as a ideal, as a value, they're missing something about how the, the, the physical world and the spiritual world work. There must be something very... That bar represented something deeply wrong in the world and that Yosef needed to go through to fix it. That's why it had scorpions and snakes. Okay? It was obviously an expression of the hate that the brothers had, right? Akravim, for example, are always a symbol of Makrovim. Okay? So it was there... It was also sneaky the way they did it because they were they were looking pretending to be Achim and then they did it. That's a snake, right? So it expressed what the spiritual energy of what they did was was in, the, in was in the bar, and what Hashem is saving him from was saving from all that. The, all that energy is there, but it's not going to affect you. Which is what happened. He went to Mitzrayim and became a Melech, right? Now the midbar was a place of total tumah. Okay? Hashem dafka took them to the Midbar in order for them to destroy the Tuma. You notice that a lot of things happened in, in to Kla Yisrael in, in the Midbar, right? Mara, they had Kirva Satava, they had all kinds of places where they did, Rafidim, where they, they had, they went to low place, lower places, right? So we think, okay, Klai Yisrael or Shemendrikim, they, they, you know, like, they, they, had, they had issues. It wasn't that way. Is that they were extremely high, elevated people. They went through an incredible cleanliness in Mitzrayim, and they were people who can receive the Torah. But then he put this holy entity in places where there's a lot of tumor, a lot of bad things, and now they had to fight with it. And within the fight, it pulled them down, and they had, they had, they had things they did wrong. But it was because of the negative influences that they were going through. As we think the Midbar was like this superb paradise, right? It wasn't like that. They were at war. Which is very clear from later in the Psukim. It says that, that when they traveled, they traveled because Hashem, Kasha Yachnu, so when they, had, when they saw the, the, the Anonim leave, and they saw the fire leave, they knew it was time to travel, right? So the Pasuk says, as a Shevach, the Klal Yisrael, it says that they were Shamru Mishmeres Hashem, Pasuk Baal Oscha. Right? That if Hashem said, don't go, they didn't go. Right? Which is a very interesting thing. Al Pi Hashem Yisu, Al Pi Hashem Yachanu. U Bahari Cha'anon Al HaMishkan Yom and Rabbim, the Anon stayed there, Vishamru B'nei Yisrael Es Mishmeres Hashem Velo Yisrael. And they held the shmir of Hashem, and they didn't go. Now, what kind of business is that? Where would they go? So, Itzala from Balazhan, the son of Rab Chaim, he said, this is explained by the Zohar, that they were into this place, and it sucked. It was terrible. They held a spiritual energy, and they felt themselves falling apart. Like, let's get out of here. No, we're staying. We're staying to fight. Or we're going to beat it. That's Mishmar Hashem. He put them in places. Okay, now time to fight. Now they had different levels, different spa- um, times where they fought different ways. Right? When they left Mitzrayim, they had issues of emuna, of food and complaints and and um, all these things, right? After they were the Torah, Hashem gave them a new weapon. It's called Hashra Sashchina. That the oil mud is in the middle. And now, the oil mud is a totally amazing place. But now to apply this way of life to all of your way of life, dealing with all these negative influences, that was the avoda of Amidbar. The whole time, they're at war. So the first thing Hashem says, okay, you ready? We're about to go to war now. Okay, we're going to travel. We're at Har Sinai. It's all nice and dandy. It's great. We're going to war, Hebra. 
Get your soldiers ready. Every single soldier's got to have a place, get a different job. Ad how did the how did the count work? Every single person came in front of Moshe Rabbeinu, Aaron, and the leader of his shaven. And he personally identified himself in front of Moshe and Aaron. And he said, Ani, Yaakov, Ben Shmuel. They said, Ah, Shlom Alechem, Yaakov, Ben Shmuel. Thank you for your matveah. You go over there to this, this place. Or actually, he said, you're, you're part of this army. You're part of this, this Shevet. There was a, an individual relationship. Every single person was assigned individually to a different group, Shevet. And then in the, that Shevet was individually assigned to a different place in the Machana of Yisrael. And all this Machana was around the Shechina. And every single person took a different direction different job, and every direction had its own challenges. And they were going to travel to the new place armed and dangerous. What are they armed and dangerous with? Shechina. That we see the truth. We see the right morals and values. We see the way to act. And we go to these places, and these places are going to come at us and try to shift us out of there. And the main war that everybody ever has in themselves is not with enemies. Right? The enemies that are outside are always a reflection of the war inside, right? You never ever have to fight with an enemy unless there's a problem with inside of you. For example, it says clearly in Chazal that before the Miraglim came, Hashem did not expect them to fight with, with weapons. They could have gone in and taken over the land, walked in, I'm here, bye, it would have worked. The reason they needed a fight was because that's what they were holding in their heart. So the main fight is always inside. So Hashem said, we're in the Midbar. There's no enemies over here. They're all going, no going to come to the Midbar. It's crazy over here. Right? The Pasuk in Dvarim says, Hamidba Hagadol Vahanora. Right? It was the place where people just not, did not go. They couldn't survive. They didn't have food. They didn't have water. Right? But Klai Yusuf was there. What are they doing? Fighting a battle. By being there and being learning the Torah there, Mukabal and Har Sinai, and having it go through their own heart and deciding what they're going to do with it, that was the war. And it didn't work so well. They had Kiro Satava, they had uh, Mis Onanim, they had Korach, they had, they had Miraglim, they had the Situ of, of Benos, Benos, uh, Benos Moav, a lot of different stuff that happened. It was big war and they, it wasn't the most successful thing in the world, right? But that's the war that they had to fight. Now, it's extremely significant that it happened in ER. Because what else happened in ER in our time? The fight for Eretz Israel at Hei ER. Right? We, we took this land, which was a midbar, and made it into a country. And the entire time, there's always intellectual battles of how we treat this country, right? And every single time we won something, by the way, it wasn't like, oh, let's go fight this war. It's like, oh, they're attacking us? Okay, so we're going to go attack them back. Like, there are different places that were Kovish in, in Eretz Yisrael, and hey, after he or took a year, it was because the government started up with them and they fought back. It also happened, in, a six-day war happened in ER which ended up giving us Yerushalayim. And the reason we got Yerushalayim is because the Jordanians started, went into the war, so we fought back. Right? So Iyar is a Zaman of Milchama. By the way, it's a Milchama right now in Iyar. Right? Iyar is a man of Milchama towards, against the Tzad Hara. Why? Why is Iyar like that? Because Nisan is a gift from Hashem. It comes mila lamala lamato. The whole avoda of ER is now what do we do with that gift? The Shekhinah is here. What do we do with all the things we have in our life? What do we do to take out the bad stuff? How do we, how do we fight? It's our way of bringing Hashem into the world. So specifically in ER, there's, the wars happen. It's also the time, if you notice, there's something called Pesach Sheni. 
which is smack in the middle of year, which means the highlight of the year, which means that it was a yomtif, a carbon created by people. Hashem didn't say it. People said, hey, how can it be you don't have a yomtif? Okay, you'll have a yomtif. And by the way, it's specifically brought down. Where is Pesach Sheni brought down? In Bamidbar. It says, the beginning in Baal Oscha, it says that they told them the mitzvah of doing Pesach, and it's out of the order, because the beginning of the Bamidbar starts with Rosh Chodesh Iyar. Suddenly, in the middle of Baal Oscha, and by the way, the whole Bamidbar, from the beginning to the end, till we get to Baal Oscha, Bamidbar Naso is all the story of how they made the, the, the organization of the Mishkan and the Levim, which is all part of the same thing. And in Baal Oscha, it says they traveled, when they traveled, 20th of Iyar, which means it's 20 days, all these parashios. And Pitom in the middle, it says, by the way, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, bring the carbon Pesach. Why is it interrupting? Because the point of that parasha is not Rosh Chodesh Nisan, you bring the carbon Pesach. It's Pesach Sheni, which is right the parasha afterwards. And because they told him to do the Pesach, and people complained, that's why that's Pesach Sheni. In other words, the part of Bamidbar is our relationship to the gifts that Hashem gave, gives us. He gave us Pesach, we said we want another one. Right? So the whole year is about having the oil moid in the midbar. Now it's time for a war. And how do we relate, how do we deal, deal with the war? And there's a lot of steps we're going to learn, each one, why it's relevant for the war to be successful. It's also the month that if you notice, first of all, the the mob will happen in the and Yud Zayin Be'iyar, that's when the Mabel starts. What was the Mabel? The Mabel was potential for all of the Torah to come down. If, if Noah would have been successful in, in being the car of his dar, he would have been Moshe Rabbeinu. And he was unsuccessful. He didn't, um, whatever the reasons were, which is clearly in Chazal, it didn't happen. So on Yud Zayin Be'iyar, all of the 40 days of Torah came out in a destructive way. Because when you have a Shefa, which people don't have Kalim for, it becomes Pesha, it becomes destructive. Right? What happened on Yud Ches Be'ir? Shim Bayuchai took all of that Shefa down into the world and brought Sisrei Torah into the world. Right? So again, the process of Iyar is one where what we do with all of this Shefa, and the beginning of that, by the way, is Pesach Sheni, the beginning of that week is Pesach Sheni, and then it continues, right? And one of the examples of that also is who died in the end of year on the day of Yom Yerushalayim, Shmuel Hanavi. Right? What did Shmuel Hanavi do? He went around all of Am Yisrael, and he was with all of the people and all of their struggles, and was with them. In other words, Bamidbar is the time where we're discussing not the theoretical Torah, the halachas. That's 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 for the Messiahs at Torah. Now what do we do with it? Right? They want a melech. Oh, you want a melech? Okay, well, you're going to have this happen. All the Shemayim's going to be upset, but I'm going to go with you anyway. Right? I anoint the king. He screws up. I anoint another one. Right? He's in the trenches with all of their stuff. And it says Shmuel Anavi, it says in Rosh Chaim Vital, that he was, he was the person who said, I'm not willing to go to my place in Gan Eden until be, the, 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 the Gula comes. So it's interesting that his day of his patir is Yom Yerushalayim that is the beginning of Yerushalayim is a step in Gil Yishchina. Now there's another huge lesson which this parasha learns about this whole process which is that what do we do in this week's parasha? We set up the army. Had they set up the army? They counted everybody. Okay? And then they took money and says you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here. And what, did that ha- what happened from that? What happened from that is the army of Hashem. In other words, you do the physical world in the proper way. If you want to have an army, you have to know where everybody is, right? And you have to organize them, and you have to put them each one thing. It's a very physical experience. But the physical world is a kli for something bigger. It's a B. This was the whole machana Hashem, right? And you can see in this forum, they talk about how the, this is the Kenege the Srofim and Shamayim. It became a very spiritual thing. But it first started in the physical world. Right? Which is exactly the process that's going on now. The beginning of the year, what happened? We have Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is made by Chilonim. 
He did not have any concept of like, yeah, we want to make this place a makom of Kadosh. And it builds and builds and builds. Just like the Navi Nicheskel says, it's like a body. It was put all of his, all of his um, bones got together. Then he had flesh, but he still didn't have a neshama. Because the physical realm of the world was set up. And that makes a clear for the spiritual realm. Like in last week's parasha, it says that the, after all the brachos of Shefa, right, you know, they have all this food and everything, then it's, in the end it says, Ve'eshbor, Ani Hashem lokeichem, Asher tzitcha miyarat mitzrayim, V'yostachem avadim, Ve'eshbos motos ulchem, Volich eschem komimius. I will go with you, komimius. What does komimius mean? Shtei komot. It means everything you do in the physical world will have an impact in the spiritual world. Right? So that's why the process, the beginning of Eir, started with having Eretz Yisrael on a physical level, and it ends having Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim is the, is the whole... It was a big vikuach among the Chilovim, which you get out of Yerushalayim. Where should the capital of Eretz Yisrael be? Should it be in Tel Aviv, or should it be in, in Yerushalayim? And I could take Ben-Gurion fought with a bunch of people. They didn't want Yerushalayim, and they said, we're to get Yerushalayim. You don't understand that the key of Kal Yisrael is only when you have Yerushalayim as the center of it. And, I, and Akadekach, when they went to Yerushalayim in their Kovish to Beis HaMikdash, they gave the keys back of the Beis HaMikdash, of the Mokom HaMikdash, to the, to the Arabs. Right? Even though, and why? First of all, Moshe Dayan did it. But the reason why was, because the Rabbanim Datiim said, we can't, we can't hold with it. In other words, they felt, we're not ready for the Beis HaMikdash. And they gave it back to the guy. Right? So it's a process of building physical, more cl- spiritual kalim, more spiritual kalim, more spiritual kalim. That's the energy of Chodesh Iyar. That's the energy of the Chodesh we're in. The energy of Milchama, Milchama Sayyetzer, Milchama of negative impacts, making a physical, a physical healthy realm that we can use to fight those battles. And then the, the main work is over here. And of course, the way to do it is always have in the middle, first of all, the Shechina, and also a relationship with somebody like Moshe Rabbein who was giving you directions. Ah, you? I know you. Okay, we'll go over here. Now, what did you learn? I'm more confused the moral, the key thing. Like, why did he take the key? I understand why he didn't take the key, but he had the option to take the key. He had the keys of the Makam and he yeah. gave it back to the Waf. Yeah. The group of the spiritual group that runs the the Haravayas today. They gave so it back to them. You don't see them on there? They run the Haravayas. The mosque on Haravayas is there, right? Yeah, and they have the keys. Yeah, they're in, they're in complete control of it. We chose that to happen. Cornflakes? Eggs. Yeah, the Khabib. There's bread outside. Cake. So what'd you learn, Daniel? My victim's only is a very tough portion. A lot of repetitiveness. Shulam! 